Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. We are continuing with the M54 engine rebuild project and it's time to pull the block out of the car. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can lift the engine up um, so it clears the bumper and pull it out that way, or you can take the whole front bumper and the whole front of the car off and just, you know, lift it up a little bit and just walk it out. Um, I, I, I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go the route of removing the hood. Honestly, I don't think you would need to remove the hood on this car. You can actually just disconnect the struts that are holding the hood up. And actually in the service manual, there's a special tool that they recommend that extends the props out so that you can lift the hood up and make it almost vertical. But of course, nobody makes that tool. It's just one of the many special tools that you see in the service manual, but you'll never find anywhere. Or if you do find it, it costs a thousand dollars. So uh, rather than go that route because I can't find that tool or whatever, I'm just going to elect to remove the front bumper and just lift the engine or walk the engine out that way. It's really not that much stuff to remove. You'll see whenever, uh, whenever I've done this in the junkyard, I've just kind of buzzed everything off in 10 minutes just so it's just easier to work on the engine and get stuff off. So not a big deal. Anyway, uh, let's get started. So I need to remove this splash panel which I've never had for the longest time that I've owned this car and only recently found two of them in the junkyard. There's uh, there are two eights that hold it up at the top there. And I think two more, there should be something else holding it here, but I think that one was broken so i couldn't have that fastener on this particular side and then yeah it hooks in right here so you just have to pull that down bend it outward am i missing anything no so just like that and We'll remove the other one in the exact same way. So while I'm down here, I'm gonna disconnect this fog light here. Thing's holding on for dear life. And then see if I can reach up and get that horn connector. Might not be able to get that from this angle. Yeah, and it's like, it's, I'll leave that till when I actually pull the bumper off. A little easier to get at. I recall spilling some fluids down on this thing a little while ago, so. I hope it's not too messy. And we got to disconnect our uh, temperature sensor, which is easier said than done. It's just a little easier to pull it out. We go. Yay. Okay, and yeah, we'll wait on the horn for that one too. So we've just got two T50s right here. Then I should be able to pull this sucker off. Kind of hold it up and disconnect the two horn connectors. One there, one there. And that's it. Bumper off. Now I'm going to set this on top of the car. I've got like a, a cloth um, spread on top on the hood of the, the car. So I'm just going to set this down on top of that. 
All right, let's go ahead and get the headlight off. Um, I'm still missing my piece of trim right here. Doesn't actually matter though. Um, I believe we've got two bolts underneath and two on top. And I miss, I seem, I seem to be missing one right here. So they are eight here, here and here. Should do it. So I'll just need to pull off some connectors back here. And again, they're just push lock connectors for the most part. I think one of, one of my little push locks is broken, but no big deal. They're all keyed, they're all different. So I just got four of them for the main light. And then we got the one for the side light here again, little push lock. That's it. Again, no need to remove the trim. Yeah, man. These things are all crusted in place. You know what? Get a little cleaner on that. Maybe some brake clean. Get some of the dirt away. Okay, yeah. Running out of places to set things. And there we go. Ah, there we go. There, another guy here. We should have that one more for the side light. Yeah. Hey, couldn't be easier. To get the radiator out, there's just one little bolt that's actually here. It's a T25. Holding it in. Stay. And then radiator just lifts out. Let's just not get it caught up on anything. And there's a little fluid inside that wants to spill out. Let's uh, figure out a good place to put this. Don't uh, damage the fins. Uh, don't spill. We need to disconnect the power steering fluid lines. I poured out most of the fluid that was in here, but there's definitely still gonna be some in the lines here. So to get these out, you wanna push forward while you're pushing in this gray thing, gray locking tool, and then you can push backward. And the trick is you just have to get it in evenly like that, and then you can pull the thing off all the way. So let's just let that drain out a little. So this bottom one has never been out. It's actually pretty difficult to even push in. This is probably more representative of what you're gonna run into. Move it back in and, in and out so that it gets moving. Try your best to push the little locking thing in. problem with these is they get dirt inside there and they get difficult to remove. Looks like my lines came out of whatever they were in. Okay. What I want to do is get this back where it was because it was kind of holding itself in place, which I liked. So right there like that. There we go. Yeah, and the, the big problem with that is that, you know, dirt gets in between that little, the little tool and just makes it really difficult to push it in. The top one was much easier because it's like brand new. All right, now let's get the, the lines unhooked from the condenser. 
I believe these are, what is this? It's a number six Allen or six millimeter Allen. Like I said, I've already had the system uh, discharged a little while ago. Before I started, there we go. One and two. So I think I'll actually disconnect the line, this line from the top of the compressor down over here. And I just pinched myself in no corner. I hate that. Come on, the other way. Rookie mistake. That's the only annoying thing about these types of ratchets, uh, you know, th to have the reverse lever up here where it gets trapped if you trap yourself. Some of them have the lever down over here. Those are the better ones, but I haven't seen an electric one that's like that yet. Cool. So AC line and all my AC lines are gonna get uh, sprayed out with solvent. I'm gonna drain the oil out of the compressor, fill it all with new oil, that whole deal. So I think maybe I'll just get this line itself off of the dryer down here, just to get it out of the way. I don't want it damaged. I'm gonna buy a new receiver dryer might as well replace it that bolt the one for the compressor the one that was holding the line on the compressor is a little bit longer than and it doesn't seem to have a washer like the other ones do might have gotten left behind okay yeah no washer on that one so i'll just have to remember that i think i'll uh well you know what I got that on tape i'll remember that that's the shorter one so yeah, like I was saying, I will replace the receiver dryer because it's like, it's only $12 or something. All it is is an empty metal can with a, a bag of desiccant in it. So there's nothing particularly complicated about it. I also purchased like a set of replacement um, AC O-rings so I can just replace the O-rings. So that'll be nice. I think while I'm here, I'll go ahead and disconnect the remaining line off of the compressor because I'm gonna to need to remove that compressor. And let's see, I just wanna spray it down first, cover the hole that I made, because it's very dirty. You don't have to take these lines off of the compressor. You can leave the compressor in the car, just sort of wire it up you know, just kind of set it off over to the side here, maybe set it on top of the, uh, the, the subframe and the steering rack. There's like a nice little place for it to go. I don't know if this line would flex enough. It might, probably not. So. The other line from the receiver dryer runs to the, uh, the expansion valve up here on the firewall. And then this other line um, also runs to the expansion valve and that runs to the com from the compressor. Big one, big line, big O-ring, all that stuff. Looks like we got a electrical connector here. Let's see, how does that come off? I'm not entirely sure if that front just comes off there. Okay, yeah, it does. That just, that just unpops. Pretty simple. Looks like that's it. Then we can just 
actually disconnect that big heavy compressor from the side of the engine. It's like we got one bolt there. Probably, yeah, we got one bolt down here. And there's another one here. So I think that's three bolts. And, you know, honestly, I don't need to pull off the AC condenser at this point. I can, you know, I can take it off after it's out of the car. Um, but, I don't know. I'm going to do it now. Just because maybe you guys might want to, you know, know how to remove it and leave it in the car. So, there's one bolt there. About that size. I'm going to leave that back one in. Actually, I should leave that top one in a couple of threads so that this thing doesn't fall. So the bottom one, let's see here. Bottom one's about here. So get that bottom one out. They're probably all the same length. Looks like they are all the same length. So. Looks like there's some dowel pins that it was sitting on. So that can sort of help you. I like that they did that. I'm gonna take this off and there we go. Compressor coming out and I'm gonna store this upright otherwise all the oil is gonna fall out and I wanna measure how much oil actually comes out of it. Once I remove this whole front clip, um, the only thing that's gonna be attaching it to the car is this hood cable right here. So I wanna see if I can pull that off first. Um, I think I can pull it backward and there's a little channel on the back to kind of let it go through. And I'm just wondering if uh, it just sort of is just held in. I don't think it is. I think it's a little more complicated than that, unfortunately. So I'm wondering if the best thing to do is remove the AC condenser so I can see it from behind. I think that might be the best way to go. I think it's just being held in with a little pop rivet over here. Plastic rivet, I should say. So just one of these. And then I see a T25 over here, I think. Yeah, that's a T25. And yeah, that should do it for the AC condenser. And look at that. Look at that stuff stuck onto it. Now let me see. That did not really help me can't really see what this thing is attached to in there. So I think maybe what I'll do next is just take off this top piece. I wasn't planning on taking it off. Um, I did have to take out the two bolts on either side that are holding it to the car, but I wasn't planning on, I was planning on taking that out with the whole bottom assembly. But now I think if I take that out, take out these bolts here that'll kind of uncover the whole hood latch thing okay these two and these two so just pull that top thing so I think if I pull these two screws off it's gonna release that piece of plastic in the back that's just kind of hiding everything Hopefully that's what this is designed for, these two screws here. I mean, in, in the junkyard, I've always just cut this cable. So that's, I've never ever taken this whole thing apart and figured out the exact procedure for getting that cable unhooked correctly. That might be enough. Okay, yeah. So that just, that just slips out. So that cable just kind of slips out of a little thing. This, you know, looks like the end of a bicycle cable. And if you just, you can pull this piece of plastic out 
enough and just sort of see where it slips in slips into the little latch right here Let's see if i can figure out where that even went because i just lost it in my mind's eye now you know what i'll figure it out once i have the whole thing off but it was easy to sort of it was easy to pull out when it comes to reinstalling you know i'll, I'll figure it out then so now we just have these 13s here and there are nuts or washers should be able to take this away Should be able to. Yeah, there we go. Looks like that inner piece wanted to come out separately. This little piece was kind of staying right here. So maybe best it's a better idea to just pull that out first. And I've been putting the nuts and bolts back where they went. Just so, you know, it's just one less thing to keep track of. I'm going to pull these two... Uh, plastic things here they're air ducts they've got two eights so <clears throat> i've already uh, disconnected the power steering pump pulled that out pulled off the uh the reservoir and the lines and such uh, and then I've just been draining the oil. Um, one issue I've just noticed is on the M52TU, there is a little hook sticking out right here that you can grab onto, or like a little loop that you can grab onto. Um, and here the, the back mounting point is right here, or engine slinging point is there. That was on the M52TU, and I did that in the junkyard, but obviously the M54 is different, so... There's no front loop for me to grab onto, which I didn't think to check for before I started this whole thing. Not a big deal. Um, I'm just gonna wrap a chain around the bottom of it and just kind of sling it that way. So no biggie, but uh, that's, just a, that's just a little bit of an issue. Um, I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna have to go underneath the car and disconnect the drive shaft from the transmission because I wanna move this whole thing forward just a little bit so that I can get on the bolts up top here. And there's just, there's not enough room. It's just like the starter. There's not enough room to actually get a socket and the, the socket wrench on the, on the bolts up here. Um, an 11 millimeter box wrench does fit over these larger E14s just perfectly, but Mine are just on a little too tight. I mean, I guess I really gave it a, a monster torque uh, last time I put the transmission together. So, oops, shouldn't have done that. Um, I was trying to avoid disconnecting the transmission or doing anything with the transmission. I was uh, hoping I could just maybe get all the bolts off from here and just leave everything in place but it uh, just doesn't look like I'll be able to do that. So um, I already have videos for, for how to do that. You know, if you look at my rear mainsail videos, you'll see how to do everything you need to do in order to get the transmission disconnected from the engine. So I'm not gonna cover all that again. I'm just gonna go underneath and do it. Um, I'm also gonna pull off these lines from the transmission. These are the, the cooler lines. And then I'll just disconnect this bracket right here and I'll just be able to pull the, the automatic transmission cooler off along with the lines and I'll just get the, the lines snaked out of there that way I don't you know damage them or anything but once we do that we can sling the engine lift it up pull it out okay guys I have made a lot more progress um, I took this transmission mount out and once that was out I was able to get the ATF cooler lines out uh, you can't do that with the, the transmission mount still on. Um, let's see, what else? I did everything I did in my rear main seal video. I've dropped the exhaust. I've disconnected the drive shaft. 
the transmission is now sitting on the on my transmission jack so the the transmission mount has been disconnected all that stuff has been disconnected and i've gotten most of the bolts off the bottom of the bell housing uh, the only ones left are this this big one here the two starter ones and these two right here now since uh since the engine is you know it, it's no longer trapped by its mounts i can actually sort of move it from side to side you know a little bit here and there you've only got so much room see i can move it all the way there i can move it all the way like that um so i've got enough room and, and i can sort of pull it forward too and that has given me enough room to actually get my uh swivel uh, ratchet with an e14 gave me enough room to just sort of get back in here and and get on this bolt and you know i was able to crack it um anyway it's it's cracked free i was able to get on it and get off of it and you can't run it down but you can crack it free and hopefully it should be able to or you should be able to get it out by hand and or you can use an 11 millimeter wrench to kind of help you along with that and i'm also able to get down on this bolt here I haven't cracked it yet. So let's see what happens with that. Oh, some idiot made these really, really tight. <laughs> I, I did not realize how tight I was making those. <clears throat> so I think the lesson there is just don't over tighten them next time. Hopefully I can get this breaker bar on here. Actually, it doesn't swivel enough. Well, let's go to my, the Pittsburgh ratchet. It's, it's slightly longer. The Harbor Freight one. Yeah. Harbor Freight to the rescue. Let go, let go stupid AC line so yeah got that one let's keep going but not too far that we can't uh, or not so far that we can't get it out um, so I got that lower one this upper one's gonna come loose see the only one only other one I have to do is this middle one down here which I was hoping I would have enough room to get if I did that. Um, so I think I might actually have enough room to get on it. Except it's sort of, it's such that, you know, the, the, they want you to have the ratchet right here. And so if I, I, I might need a little extension with that. They kind of didn't mean for you to have a ratchet this close to it, or I guess a bit that close to it. So if I use my little one inch extension, that might work for that. I'm not entirely sure that I'm gonna have room to get on it and to actually swing the ratchet. See, now I can actually get on it correctly. Wow, that sucker is really on there. What an idiot. Why did I put it on there that tight? I guess I didn't want it to come off, but holy crap. I did spray the other two with penetrating fluid. There's the end of the bolt and there's that end. I don't know if it did anything, but Hopefully it'll, it'll do something for me now. And the big problem here is I don't think my breaker bar is gonna fit on there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Wow. That sucker was on there. 
He was screaming for mercy. No, don't loosen me. No choice. You're coming off, buddy. So I think I'll go ahead and take this one off and then I can just take the two top ones off last. See if I can get that by hand. Feels like I can. Whew. Oh, I can feel that it's starting to starting to move now. So let's see. I think I want to go and jack up the transmission a little bit. Let's jack up the transmission. Yeah, like that. That way it's uh, the bottoms pressing against, you know, the bottoms are pressing against each other because it was, it just did one of these on me. Um, I think I definitely, so anyway, let's talk about this. Um, Obviously, I have a seat belt wrapped around the front and I've just got a chain slung through the rear lifting point and I've got them all connected together with a bolt here. So I'm going to come in with the engine crane and just lift this thing up, take up tension here, and hopefully I'll be able to get back here and, and uh, with tension taken up on both of the, the engine and the transmission, should be able to unscrew those. Just kind of get them in a place where I can unscrew them. I think I want to be all the way over this way. Because, you know, our issue now is they've both got tension on them. So I'll just have to get it such that there's no tension anywhere. Okay. So we've got some tension taken up on the engine. Probably actually too much because I can see that it's come away from the transmission a little bit. So it's going to be an interesting balancing act. Okay, actually we're pretty good here. I can sort of feel like it, this one, definitely the bottom one. I can sort of kind of begin to loosen that one. Forgot about the starter bolts too. I definitely should have pulled the starter bolt, the starter out completely before I even swung the crane in here. But oh well. Okay, looks like I did crack that bolt. I think I probably cracked them both now that I remember. Now that I'm remembering, here, let me go on this side. And uh, look what I found, a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. What I didn't remember that I had last time I did my starter video. I found this in a junkyard, forgot all about it. Easy. Okay, two more bolts and we are home free. Okay, I did say an 11 millimeter wrench was ideal for this, but it's actually a little bit too much. I mean, it fits incredibly tight. Looks like a 12 is just loose enough to get on and off easily, you know? So this is gonna work out nicely. Okay, there's that one. Now we just have this top one. I think it's actually loose. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's loose.
Flywheel's already disconnected. All that stuff is disconnected. Pop that spacer plate off of there just so that nothing's grabbing it. And I think we should be free, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna lose some coolant. Almost certainly. Let me grab that. I don't know how this is gonna settle. Oops, sorry. Okay. Looks like we're nice and free. <laughs> forward a little oh yeah so it looks like we're gonna settle in the downward position a little okay let's let it drain that coolant I think we're probably high enough to actually come out of there it might be I just want to come a little higher anyway like that Hang on, I don't like that we're turning, twisting. Let's go like that. Yay, engine's out, woohoo! I think I'm definitely gonna set this thing down. I didn't, <laughs> I did not put together my engine stand yet. And I also don't even have the brackets for uh, bolting this thing to the end and not the brackets the bolts for bolting this thing to the engine stand um, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna have to go get those so let's get this flywheel off of here Okay, so I went and got bolts to uh, hook the, uh, the engine to my engine stand holding bracket here, and they are M12 by 1.75 thread pitch, 90 millimeters long because I got washers on them. If you don't get washers, you only really need like 85 or 80 or 85 millimeters long. Uh, and then, of course, it depends on whichever engine stand you're using. I mean, if this is longer, then you're going to need different bolts. So just uh, figure out what you need.
There we go. Cool. So now, take tension off that. Ta-da! So, it turns out this is actually a pretty good engine stand that I got from Harbor Freight. It's the, um, what is it? It is the thousand pound, so half ton capacity engine stand. Um, <clears throat> the thing I like about it is, I, I, I know there are a lot of like, there, there are complaints about this, being that when you get, you know, an engine on, it actually starts to like, you know, hang heavy and it, you know, the people call it a death trap or blah, 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 or whatever they call it. I think that Harbor Freight might have improved it recently because there's now a little uh, bracing welded down right here. Before, I think people were saying that this thing would actually, you know, stretch forward when you, when you put the weight of the engine on it. But I, I honestly think they might have improved that. It, that. That might not have been there on some of the older models of this, this engine stand. You know, say what you want about Harbor Freight they do improve their stuff over time, which uh, is, is kind of one thing that I really like about them. Um, so anyway, yeah, um, it seems to be good. Seems to be pretty stable. You know, it doesn't, I can't really flex it. I'm pressing down on it. It's not flexing down too much. And this is a long block, a long um, inline six block. So yeah, I think I would do a V8 on this. I'm, obviously it would be a lot heavier once I put the cylinder head on it, but pro it would still probably be pretty damn good, so. I'm happy with it. Um, so yeah. Okay guys, I couldn't wait. I really want to know if there's any warpage at all. So um, I've got my two thousandths feeler gauge right here. You can see there's, there's drag as I try to get it under there. Drag, there's drag, drag. Of course, three thousandths doesn't want to go at all. But it looks like whatever, like the, the two thousandths, doesn't want to get there. It doesn't want to start in there. It barely wants to start there. It's a little bit of drag there. Tiny bit of drag there. Mine in the center here. Tiny bit of drag. Doesn't want to get in. So, two thousandths, uh, it, and it's not even two thousandths warp either. It's, it's you know, here, this is two thousandths point zero zero one six thousandths. And even this one was having trouble going there. It goes underneath there, goes under there, trouble there. So that's really the, the amount of warp. So 0 0.04 millimeters or 0 0.0016 thousandths. So that's a thousandth plus six ten thousandths. And that's, that's the amount of warpage. And honestly, that's fine. <laughs> We're, I'm not gonna be doing anything about that. No need to do anything about that. So that is the end of this video. We got the engine out. We got it mounted on the stand. I'm very happy. Um, as far as taking the front of the engine off versus, or the, the front of the car off versus moving the hood up and pulling it out that way, I, I leave the decision to you really. Um, it's just whichever way you want to go. Um, I taking, taking the front end of the end of the car off really wasn't that big of a deal for me. So I'm happy I did it this way. Um, I I'm glad I was kind of able to get in there and, and, you know, crack the bolts off that way. It was, it was, I, I, I would have had a much harder time if I left the front of the car on getting those bolts off. I would have had to take them off from underneath the car using long extensions the way I did in my rear main seal video. So keep that in mind. If you want to do it that way, if you want to crack all your bolts off and get them off that way, up to you. The way I did it was kind of a little easier. It would have been a lot easier if they weren't so tight, but in the end, I, I, I kind of like the way that I did it. So yeah, up to you which way you want to go. Um, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you want to receive updates on this project as I go along. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.